well, 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 we have to some peculiar sets of data here. Um, we did predict the sun was going to chain react based upon the collapsing cavities that we witnessed. Um, and, you know, we're seeing these patterns that we've been tracking and following and using them to make predictions, accurate predictions, very accurate predictions. Um, we're, we're seeing that kind of I don't want to say fall apart, but it just seems like the predictability, the reliability, and the durations are becoming less pronounced. The sun still seems to be very sensitive to alignments more than the earth. But, uh, and we'll go, we'll show you the earthquake patterns and, uh, and we'll go from there. But basically I'm running through some of the, the, solar reactivity that has been going on um, we we do feel we know where planet X is uh, we we feel it's really uh, you know it's it's leaving the solar system faster than it entered uh, and because of the acceleration around the Sun when you of course factor in distance to your magnetics your tidal forces your gravity the force falls off exponentially. It's it's not a proportionate falling off of the force. The force is exponential. Uh, the equation is divided, you know, by distance squared, divided by distance cubed. So the further your distance, um, the lesser and lesser your forces become. And anybody who's played with magnets. Uh, realizes this as you get close to the magnet the the attraction between magnets becomes incredible the closer you get and it's not it's not proportionate to distance it's exponentially um, related to the distance when we look at the earthquake patterns we see the, a, a, a more pronounced, more definitive string of quakes uh, occurring occurring earlier than we had predicted. Uh, we had predicted quakes towards the end of November and the beginning of December. And there are quakes then and there, but we're not seeing the string or the clustering. The string and clustering, as you can see, is really predominant um, in the middle of November, where we had the big quakes. And uh, the alignment we had there was a 90 degree alignment between Jupiter and Planet X, and there really was not a an alignment that involved the Sun, which then you would think would lessen your magnitudes, but that's not what we saw. Then we we flash forward to current today, and we see that you know we had a large quake on the fourth, which is what we were predicting. You know the the end of this month we are predicting a large quake and we see towards the end of November a large quake of 7.0 in the Solomon Islands but you know the 22nd the 18th 6.9 couple days later 7.0 then a 6.0 6.2 you know so 11.22 11.23 some clustering but then we had a like a whole week with no quake and then boom the 6.7 so this is roughly what we were predicting we were telling you uh, this is what was going to occur what I haven't checked on is the strandings of the mammals uh, and we know that gravitationally and magnetically they are very very sensitive and so these alignments you know really threw off a lot of the older animals who had a very well programmed compasses in their brains this is the alignment of the, in uh, mid November that we saw the earthquakes you know we had alignment 
between between the sun and Venus, but Venus was on the other side of the sun, um, and and there's the only other alignment, the large body alignment that would set off a string of quakes like this, would be between Jupiter and where we think Planet X is. So that would be a 90 degree alignment, and those are in fact geo effective bec because the magnetic fields are strongest when you're 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field but in the news in the news was a massive gamma ray burst that massive gamma ray burst of course caught a lot of people's attention now what bothers me when they report upon gamma ray bursts and x-ray bursts and interplanetary magnetic fields coming from somewhere else is they're very very sketchy on where you know these these bursts are occurring you can go to just the regular mundane layperson's science reports and they won't tell you and so you kind of have to dig into it to figure it out of course we want to know if this gamma ray burst is related to a brown dwarf why would they be giving off gamma ray bursts you know from what direction you know and the the thing is is the closer you are to a gamma ray burst the brighter it is so when you have a massive one a big one um, then you're either dealing with a really huge explosion or you're doing dealing with something that's relatively close to earth and that kind of threw them off a bit they they pinned this explosion much closer to Earth than it actually was, at least, you know, by what they're telling us. And of course, what NASA tells you is subject to scrutiny. But the gamma ray burst came out of a very small constellation called Sagitta. And the, the X-ray diffused rings uh, became visible in an area where normally it would be invisible and this highlights what's going on in the corona of the Sun you have dust and debris and particles that normally are invisible but then you you flash electrons and x-rays and gamma rays through the dust and the dust lights up in concentric rings and then so this is what's really happening um, were lighting up gases and plasma in, in fact, the corona, and now this gamma ray burst is doing the same thing. They have put this gamma ray burst at 1.9 billion light years away, so that means that explosion happened 1.9 billion years ago. Talk about boggling the mind. Well, you know, our biggest concern has been that the sun's going to go into solar maximum while we have these interstellar particles at their maximum so with the sun's maximum energy interacting with uh, the highest density of particle concentrations we have ever seen inside our solar system is going to create a particle interaction in a background x-ray um, that is far beyond anything that uh, humans have ever experienced and we have seen those symptoms we We've been measuring, we've been warning, we've been preparing, we've been protecting ourselves from these x-rays. And, and then, of course, the x-ray charts become more and more subjective. This is a list of the last 30 days of the uh, solar activity. The, the, what I like about this, it gives you the sunspot number. And you can go back and can compare to what the x-rays are showing on the x-ray graphs to see if there's something fishy going on see the higher the number of sunspots then the higher the x-rays should become on the list of sunspot numbers you go to the very bottom of the table and that gives you that gives you recent sunspots and you see they're they're increasing we're at 116 115 sunspots uh, whereas one month ago we were at 750 and I find that kind of odd because our background x-rays have crept up higher than they were with the higher sunspots and 
And so that tells me they may be soon, or if not already, smoothing out the x-ray data. And you want to talk about smoothing out x-ray data, let's go over to the right-hand side of the column. You'll see where goes 15 x-ray background flux. Uh, you see a, a column there. And lo and behold, you get zero values. Now, I, I, I don't know. I mean, did, did they shoot GOES-15 out of the sky? Did it crash with uh, the space station? I mean, why is GOES-15 not being reported? Why is the background X-ray flux? And do you think it's ironic or a coincidence that the one thing we've been warning about, the one thing we've been warning about, ends up edited off of a database? But we look at the flaring, and we, we see uh, in, again, in mid-November, mid we see, during that 90-degree alignment, we see a sharp increase in the flaring that mimics the sharp increase in clustering of earthquakes. I mean, the dates are right there, 11-11, 11-12, 11-13. And 11-11 used to be a huge date for earthquakes because it was a 90-degree alignment with Aquarius and Earth and the Sun. So here we are back in the middle of November and why wow, it's becoming active again, um, which is unusual, but the fact of the matter is we did have a 90 degree alignment between Planet X and Jupiter. So then we get down to where we told you the earthquakes and the, and the, and the, the real string was happening and actually, the November stream of quakes was much more impressive, much more to find, um, much easier to, to visualize. But again, we, we're seeing that during this direct alignment with Planet X and the Sun, we're seeing a, a, an increase in the number of flares that are occurring. And right now, we're seeing a lot, a lot of smaller flares but but you know the C flares are, are basically and the M flares and the X flares are basically what we're tracking and you see through the month you can see the M and M flares you see one two three you know five M flares in the last month so look for that to sharply increase uh, in the coming months. And again, when you have more sunspots, you have more x-rays. And if your background x-rays are already at unprecedented proportions, the last thing you need is for the sun, you know, to start having thousands of sunspots. You know, that's the last thing um, we need to see. The alignment uh, that we're having right now between Mars, the Sun, and Earth should be alignment with Planet X. Find Mars in the sky and go 30 degrees due north of Mars. And that's your search area. You will not be able to see it without an infrared detection device. But if you're looking for Planet X, you're looking for a small cotton ball-like object that's glowing reddish orange um, and the further away it gets the less orange it shall become interesting in this picture though was the number of cometary related meteor showers that are you know in this image and you if you pull back you'll see even more but uh, we find it quite quite unusual to see this many radiant points and this many meteor showers in this position of the sky but if you are searching for planet x where we have it and and now now i'm, I'm less confident now than i've ever been uh, because of the the lack of earthquake clustering but what we will wait and see another two or three days and we'll we'll break that alignment we'll see what happens um but you you go right to mars tonight and Try to go 30 degrees, 30 to 40 degrees due north of Mars, and um, that's where we have Planet X. 
and there's that alignment with uh, Earth, Mars, and the Sun um, pointing right at the position that we've had Planet X.